and welcome to my dorm room. Yeah, that's right. My dresser is housing some books to make a decent bookish background. That's the best that I can do. Hello, fellow reading warriors, and welcome back to my channel, A Reading Warrior. I'm one of you guys. I just love reading. And yes, as I said, I have moved into my dorm by now. Um, today's video is going to be a wrap-up of all the things that I've recently read because even though it's the start of college and I have a lot of homework already, I have still been able to do a good amount of reading. So I'm just going to tell you what I thought. It gives a little short reviews for all the books that I have read. So let's get into this. So this list is going to go from pretty much when the reading rush ended until literally today. Now I finished a book this morning and I was really excited about it, but I'll get into that later. Um, so the first book that I read after the reading rush was Cruel Prince and the, the Airfolk trilogy, except the third one isn't out yet. So I actually listened to the first one, um, The Cruel Prince. I also listened to The Lost Sisters, which is like a little companion novel. It's really short, really quick, really good. Um, and then I've also listened to The Wicked King. I'm going to do a whole different video review of this trilogy as soon as the third one comes out. And I'm going to kind of give you my feel after each book throughout the trilogy. So that's going to be a whole separate video, so I won't talk about it too much. But I will say that I do recommend it for any fantasy-loving reader. Then next, after that, I actually started reading a book series that is very popular. Um, but was also kind of a kids book series. I started reading a series of unfortunate events because I had seen the movie way back when it came out and I recognized that it was not a good movie. All pretty much almost every book turned into a movie either ends up a disaster or good just not as good as the book. Feel free to argue with me on that but like most of the time that's the situation. Um, point is the TV show TV show, I can speak English, the TV show came out and I watched that and I loved it and I realized that I missed out as a child when I didn't read those books when everyone else was. So I am low-key catching up on the series of unfortunate events. I currently have finished the seventh book. I think they're all amazing and I definitely should have read them when I was younger because there are words in there that like would have been good to know when I was younger. Most of them I know now, some of them I don't actually know right now. Yeah, freshman in college, I don't know these words. <sighs> so that's why I need to read them, yeah? Um, so as I said, I have finished the seventh book and I'm actually gonna get the eighth book from my college library tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna pretend it's for a children's lit class even though it totally isn't because that is not my major and that's not what I'm studying, but you know, we're just gonna have to go with it. Um, in the meantime, I've also done some other book readings and a lot of audiobook listening because when you're walking from college class to college class or like to your dorm, it's a lot of good like audiobook time and it's pretty great. So I listened to The Last Magician, which is a book about um, these people who have these uh, their own independent power. One of them, the main character, she can go back in time or she kind of slips through time which I really liked the concept of how the author described it as her slipping through the seconds and in between the moments. Um, but she goes back in time and she tries to find the last magician and get this book that is going to save everyone who has these um, powers. So that's a, a very broad overview of the book. I enjoyed it. Um, like the audiobook version of it was fine, the story was good, it was interesting. It is a very like 1920s, um, that, that's when she travels back to and that's really cool. I just wish I had gotten more of that specific setting in the book. Um, so I think it was a pretty good book. I'd rate it like 3 out of 5 stars. Like it was good but there was just nothing special or uncaptivating to me, um, so I'm probably not actually gonna read the second book. I might not move on because there are other series that I found that I like better. Moving on! I also read The Catcher in the Rye. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen that I actually took that book to Canada and read it in Canada with me as I was visiting family. 
Um, I was at Niagara Falls and I was carrying it around with me and I was like, oh, I have to do a picture even though the book does not match the actual surroundings that I'm in, I just thought it made for a pretty picture. Um, so I read that and I know there's a lot of controversy of like people who absolutely love the book versus people who hate it. And normally I can get on one end or another, but I'm also a very indecisive person. And what I'm going to say about this book is that I admire the creativity that the author used like as for the main character for Holden like I thought it was really cool and really interesting that we had like a very strong character as the main character like Holden had his own personality and he was stuck to it throughout the entire book I admire that however I just didn't mind him much I didn't I don't like a lot of the things he like said or gave reasoning to but there were also some redeeming moments um this is not quite a spoiler but like if you're in the middle of the book skip ahead for a little bit um but the the thing with holden and his sister that was a huge redeeming thing for me how he wants to um like have his sister have a normal childhood and like grow up to be a good person even if he doesn't view himself as that I, that to me was like one of those savings like okay you know what I can I can get behind Holden for some things and then he'd go and he'd say something stupid or sexist or something and I'd be like okay maybe not and so I just kind of went back and forth throughout the book with my opinion on him because he would do certain things and say certain things that would make me like switch sides but I will definitely say it was a very interesting read and I would still recommend it just because it's so different in terms of narration of other novels and just kind of how to view the world especially in the 1950s like I read that and I knew it was like older but then after I read it I was like whoa that was in the 1950s okay like it made perfect sense but that's just not always like yeah it was a very interesting fit I did enjoy it even if I didn't agree with the main character Holden all the time um, I also listened to the audiobook The Wicked Fox and here I'm going to talk about the book versus the audio version because with the audio version I had a hard time with the person who was reading it because she would say something really quietly and then she would be like yelled someone like yelled the character and I'd be like you just whispered it when they were supposed to be yelling and vice versa she would like say something really loud when I was supposed to be like under the breath of one of the characters and so I just had a hard time um really connecting to the audiobook because what she said versus what she did didn't quite match up with what the characters were doing if that makes any sense um I jumped the gun a little bit for those of you who don't know Wicked Fox is based on Korean mythology it's really cool um, I started reading this because of a recommendation done by like Haley and Bookland, read by Zoe and a Clockwork Reader, aka Hannah, because I love watching their videos and I was like, oh, I want to listen to their book chats, but I was like, mm, I also want to read the book before I do that. So I chose to read Wicked Box because also Korean mythology, I do not read enough of that and I know very little, if any, of it. So <laughs> I decided I'd give it a try. I liked the book. I would give it again three out of five stars because um, I mean it does kind of play around with time a little bit and you don't quite like always know exactly when it is I didn't have a problem with that until one point in the book and that was like near the end like I just didn't really matter that we had continued to move on with time so I just kind of figured also like again it was a pretty good book um i honestly don't know if i'll pick up the next one we'll honestly see how i feel when it comes out because again i would love to read more korean mythology um and it was a pretty okay book like the characters were pretty good um it's another one of those things where it's like the main character started off really strong and then kind of dwindled for me but like a bunch of other side characters i actually really enjoyed um, so I liked the minor cast better than the major cast in this book. Uh, the next book that I read was called Shatter Me. It's the first in a very long series that I am hopping on the bandwagon pretty late into. 
uh, but I decided to give it a try nonetheless. So again, that's Shatter Me, and I very much enjoyed it. I rated this more 4 out of 5 stars. I liked the... Again, this is another one where some... This girl, it's like if you touch her, then you die, or like you get tortured, and then if like, you stay skin-to-skin -skin contact for too long, you'll die, but, um, but if you like let go, then it's only like torture and pain and stuff. Um, and so she's kind of like locked up, locked away, very secluded from other people because I mean, yeah, that would scare the crap out of a lot of people if you accidentally like touch someone and all of a sudden you're tortured. Like, mm hmm, that's something to be cautious of. Um, so it's about her and um, it's in a post apocalyptic world and. The army is like trying to recruit her to help but she doesn't really know what to do because she hasn't had any human contact for like three years ever since she was 14 and she's been locked up so it's as she's going back into the world but with a deal of people she doesn't like and just kind of how she deals with that really it's really cool it's hard to explain without giving things away <laughs> sorry but i would definitely recommend reading it um I loved the narration of it. It's a very unique narration because even though it's like still first person and they, she's a really cool character, but like there was literally at some point in the beginning where the entire thing was just, I am not insane, 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 over and over and over and over and over again, which just made you really think like, are you really not I don't know but again I listened to the audiobook of it so I was uh, listening to that so I don't know like if it lasted an entire page but it sounded like it could have also I liked the audiobook reader of it because she gave a very like small innocent voice to the character almost but it definitely fit and she just had one of those voices that helped me keep in perspective of the character to what's going on um, and there is a romance plot within it, and I liked that. Normally, I don't go for, like, YA romance plots. Like, I don't mind them at all, but they're not, like, what I read the YA books for. Um, and there is a slight bit of a triangle in there, which, again, I'm always like, oh, triangle, I'm so sick of them. Like, I have a hard time um, wanting the main character to be with one or the other or with either of them. But in this one, I actually was like, oh my gosh, they need to make it. This needs to happen. And da -da -da -da. So that is a definite plus. Um, I wish we could have done a little bit more with what the world looks like, a little more of a description of the world after, you know, what all kind of happened. You don't really know the history a lot and you don't really have much of a description i think that'll come in next books and yes i am going to continue this series i am going to do my best to find the next one and read it and i'm very excited to do so i listened to the audiobook version of how to train your dragon because i watched a video read by zoe and it's her audiobook recommendations and she said that a how to train your dragon was read by david tennant who is an actor a Scottish actor and I know him as the 10th doctor from Doctor Who and he read that book beautifully and I loved it I'm not gonna like continue with the series because series of unfortunate events is enough of a childhood series for me but I just had to listen to that and it was actually amazing so just side note I also read that and I also enjoyed it alrighty almost done but I still have two more books to talk to you guys about and this next one is the Candle and the Flame by Azad. Nafiza Azad. Oh my goodness. It's a slower book, but at the same time, once you get into it and really get going and you look back, you're like, oh, but this happened and this happened and this happened in this short amount of time. So it feels slow, but it really isn't, if that makes sense. Um, I generally do not do well with slow books. So like at the beginning I was like, oh come on, I can do this, but it did not take long to like pick up or for me to kind of get used to it. Um, I really liked it. This book is about a girl whose name is Fatima and she lives in a country called Kirat, Q-I-R-A-T. And in that country there are human beings and then there are also jinn, which is like 
genies, except Jim, Jin is the actual Arabic name for them and the original, and that's what everything should be. Um, and all of a sudden there is an attack and a lot of people die and she was one of the few survivors. Um, she one day is with um, her makeshift father, like so her parents died and there is an old man that she talks to a lot and like is like her, her baba is like her father but isn't technically and he gets killed in the first part of the book. And something happens to her and she gains Jin fire. So she is human, but then all of a sudden she has this Jin fire and she's now Fatima Gazala. Like, she kind of, I, I think it was really cool what they did with the name of hyphenating it now that she is this new person. And it's her journey of balancing the Jin and the human inside of her because also when her Baba died, um, he passed along his gift, which is he is the name giver. So what he has to do is he takes Jin in the Jin world, he gives them a name, and then that gives them a human form to come into the human world. So it's a very important role, and he's the only one that does it, and it gets passed down when each of them dies. And he passed it on to her, even though she had no training, no nothing. And so it's her learning to become the name giver while also balancing uh, being a djinn but still being human and figuring all of that out and it was really cool. Um, I, again, there's a romance plot underlying here and I really enjoyed that. I love the romantic interest. The, I'm not going to say his name. I almost did. But I'm not going to say it because I don't do spoilers in my reviews. No, I refuse. Um, and like Fatima Ghazala is like a decent character. I feel like there could have been a little bit more to her. Um, but I have to say my favorite characters was actually the Maharaja and his wife. They are my favorite characters. They are a little bit in the minor cast. They're not like the major characters, but like they're still pretty big. Um, but they're my favorite. They are couple goals all the way. They are ruling the country goals all the way. Like, Oh, I loved them so much. This book I would probably give a 4 out of 5 stars. Again, maybe a 4.5 if that were possible on Goodreads. Because I I liked um, the whole like balancing. I loved the characters. And I really liked how he described the country of like the north and the south. And then the different tribes of Jin And how they all like intertwine with each other and then there's the ones that like to create chaos and the ones that don't and their turmoil and all the things happening but like it's also not super complicated and I also really love that um there is a mix of Arabic words Hindi words and Urdu words um and so if you come across those and you're like I don't know what this means I don't understand there is a glossary in the back of the book that you can use for a reference because I am an Arabic major, I would see words in Arabic and I'd be like, oh yes, I know that. And it would be really cool because it just kind of adds in like that little bit of culture and authenticity to these books. Um, but if like you don't know, like I didn't know Hindi or Urdu, so there's a little thing in the back of the book. So it was really fun to like learn those. And then like there's a whole bunch of traditional food in there and I'm like, oh my word, I don't know what it is, but now I'm hungry. <laughs> um, and just a lot of beautiful culture included in the book. Um, so I think it was a really good educational thing for me to read while it also being a really fun like fantasy, magical. It's probably one of my new favorite books that I own. So the last book that I read that I finished this morning, I had an hour left in the book and so I kind of stuck a little earbud in while I was at work this morning and finished it, was An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. Yeah, I read Hank Green's book. And I think it was a pretty interesting, like, uh, contemporary novel. I would give it a 3.5 out of 5. Like, it was one of those books where, like, the plot kind of was here, and then it went up, and then it kind of went to a little bit of a lull for me, and then it went up again, and then it was just kind of, like, up there. So it was a little bit of an up and a down and up and a down in terms of, like, how the plot went. Um, which wasn't too bad because it did pick up after a low point pretty quickly, so I could get through it pretty okay. Um, the characters I enjoyed. So this book is about uh, three friends. The main character is April May and then her friends Andy and Maya and actually she's dating Maya at the beginning of the book. 
um, but she's also her roommate. So it's about how she's coming home, April May is coming home from work one day, and there's this big, like, metal statue thingy, like, in New York that kind of appeared out of nowhere. So she calls her friend Andy, and they make this little comedy skit video of, like, oh, this is Carl. Hi, Carl. And just, like, made a whole hilarious video at 3 in the morning about this robot. And that video goes viral because apparently a bunch of those little robot Carl thingies have appeared all over the world and no one knows where they came from, how they got there, what they're doing, why, etc. and so forth. Um, so it's about how she makes these, they make these videos about it and they kind of solve the mystery of all the Carls and where they came from and why they're there and how April May and her friends actually get pretty famous as they do so because they were the kind of the first to talk about it and, and they continue to like solve mysteries and um, just record more videos and so they became really famous so it's all about balancing you know what's going on with friendships and relationships and it's a whole kind of book about that I thought it was a very fascinating very interesting idea I definitely enjoyed reading it um, the ending again this is a spoiler free review but like it was really cool because it was narrated all throughout like a professional book reader and she was like really cool I think she did a great job narrating the book but then the very last chapter Hank Green reads it I'm not gonna explain why or like what's up but I'm not gonna explain why or what's up but Hank Green read a little bit of his own book and I thought that that was just the coolest thing so yeah I would also recommend reading that book because it was interesting and it was fun and it just sorry the camera's really shaking my phone was getting really hot so I needed to move it um, so I would definitely recommend just like casually reading it for fun if you have the time so that is it for all the books that I read in the past like month slightly two months sorry two months um, middle end of July so like beginning August to mid end September two months maybe slightly under I read 16 books in the past two months now remember the first seven of those were series of unfortunate events and I was able to read like one a day of those so just remember that but yeah I did get a lot of reading done and a lot of audiobook listening done with it too haha uh -huh. um, so yeah next video I can already tell you that it's gonna be a little sneak peek it's gonna have my fall TBR but also specifically Spookathon because thank you books and Lala she is still um, running that even though it's just her I'm gonna talk a lot more about it in my announcement video but I can just tell you guys that that is coming up so stay tuned if you're excited for it and you want to know when I do release it I do release videos every other Thursday Friday ish um, so every other week I'll do it because I want to actually have time to do my homework because I'm paying thousands and thousands of dollars to do this um, so like I said every other week on Thursdays, maybe Fridays if I'm running late, otherwise you can always just subscribe and click the bell and so you can get a little notification of when I upload next so that you don't miss it. Um, if you like this video, um, please feel free to give it the thumbs up button. If you want to comment down below, comment with books that you also read, books that you might consider reading now if you want me to focus on different things in my reviews, you know, critiques, compliments, whatever you want, feel free to comment below. All comments will be happily read by me and I'll try to respond to them as well but with that I'm gonna wish you happy reading